Her name is Micah. She is adorable. Thank you. You can clap for her if you want. She's Yes, Micah, you're over there. She's crawling now and standing up and holding herself up on things and like doing this and like plopping back down on her butt. And she's just so cute. But yeah, it's just amazing to me how much I can love someone. Like, no offense to Jenny, like she knows, she gets it. Like she we Love her so much. I love Micah so freaking much. I love her little gushy cheeks, her little teeny lips, her head, and her big gap in her teeth. <laughs> it's so cute. And she just, like, does this when she gets excited and, like, wiggles her butt when she gets excited. And I love everything about her. And she has this little personality she's developing, and she's just so cute. And one of the coolest things since being a dad is thinking about how much more God loves Micah than even I love her. It's so cool. She has such a loving Heavenly Father, more than I can ever comprehend. So it's just been blowing my mind every time I look at her and I think God loves her more than me. It's, it's just so amazing. Blows my mind. But anyway, we're talking about Questio tonight. And this is a series you guys are in, Questions. So I thought I'd start off by asking you guys some questions. And I have in my purse here some prizes for people who can answer questions right. All right, ready? So, first question, what is the lowest prime number? You have to, I have to call on you, raise your hand. Okay, um, Caleb. That is correct, you get a prize. What do we have here? Oh, you got the board, sorry. All right, second question, what was the second question? What is wasabi made from? I'm going to go with the lady because we just had a guy. Not avocados. Isaiah? Not peas. Do you guys don't know what wasabi is made out of? What is it? I mean, maybe somebody calls it that, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. I was looking for Japanese horseradish. That is correct. What do you get? You get oh, you get a special snowflake. Glittery. Cool. What is the slowest moving land mammal? Spencer. The three-toed sloth. That is correct. What do you get here? Nice bowling pin. All right. I keep forgetting these questions. I should have them memorized. Which historic figure is famous for having said, give me liberty or give me death. Can't be Spencer. Vic Sorry, Veronica. It is not Thomas Jefferson. Brennan? It's Patrick Henry. You get a roll of carpet. Sweet. All right. Um, yes. Last question. Which four U.S. states begin with W? Not Washington, D.C. Nope. All right. Yes. You get a potato. Awesome. All right. So, Grant, I know these prizes are, are a little silly and not very great. But if you don't want that potato, I'll take it back because they're really good. Those are good potatoes. But I just thought that's, you can blame Josh for those prizes because he helped me find all of them except the potato. And he's like, dude, don't throw me under the bus. But he's the worst. No, I'm just kidding. I love you. But yeah, it's just a fun way to introduce the question for tonight, which is, is this all there is? Is there more? Is there more to life than this? And many people ask this question. You guys have probably heard this question before. Maybe you've asked it yourself in different ways, like, what's my purpose? Why am I here? And I've asked those questions in my life, and do I even have a purpose? There's so much bad happening in the world. What, what does death make of life? Like, was it worth it? What does it mean? And I think maybe even as a Christian, sometimes we have the question, like, is there more to life? Is there more to following Christ than this? 
Because sometimes there's this like there's this longing, like you know Jesus, and something is still unfulfilled. Like maybe you feel bored, or maybe you feel like you don't have it right. Maybe you try and try and try and try to please God, but He still feels distant. It doesn't feel like enough. I know I've I've had times where I felt like that, where God has just felt distant, and I've tried and I've tried, felt like I wasn't doing enough. Regardless if you felt specifically like that tonight, I want you to know that tonight is for you because the principles we're talking about tonight apply to every person in every situation. So the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. And so my hope is that he is going to deliver this tonight into where it needs to interact with your life and your heart. And we're just going to be ready for him to speak to us. So let's just pray for that right now. God, we open ourselves up to you just like that song we were singing. We want more of you. I pray that this truth tonight would permeate our lives and our hearts and touch us and take us deeper than we've ever been before. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, grab your Bibles and open up to Matthew chapter 27, verse 51. It's a short little verse, but I'll give you time to get there in your Bibles because you might want to read the story that this takes place in when you get home tonight or tomorrow night. It'd be a great way for the Spirit to speak to you more. Matthew 27, 51. Suddenly the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. Is there more to life than this? Is there more to being a Christian than this? I want to show you guys how this verse, and it's not the only one, but how this verse answers these two questions with an emphatic yes. First, we're going to do a little history lesson, and we're going to talk about what this curtain means. So, big picture, if you did not know, if you're here tonight, you did not know, Jesus, the Son of God, or God become man, came to this earth as a baby, lived life as a human, yet without sin, without any wrongdoing, He took compassion on people around him. He had a ministry. He healed people. He was known for doing many signs and wonders. And in the end, some might say the beginning, he ended up giving his life by Roman crucifixion to accomplish something amazing. And that's what this curtain is all about. And the verse we read takes place right as Jesus dies on the cross. It says, while on the cross, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Then the earth shook and the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom and the rock split. This is super significant. Why is that significant, Jake? Teach me. All right, little boy or little girl, I will teach you. You're, in high, you're not in high school. <laughs> so in the temple, some of you may know, there are these sections that are kind of divided from each other as you go deeper in. So go ahead and throw that first picture up. These are just models. We don't have pictures because the temple was destroyed partly because of this happening with the curtain. So you see that big section where there's like the flat part on each side of that building? That's the outer court of the temple where people can come in and worship God and pray, and anyone can come in there. Um, Then go to the next picture. That's a close-up model of the building that was inside there. So then you have more courts. You have the inner court, which is that first section. Then you have the holy place and the most holy place, or holy of holies, beyond that. And then go ahead, go to the next picture, which is, this is the worst model that I found of this. It's not very good, but basically there's a curtain there and it's separating the holy place from the most holy place. And that curtain is basically, that's the purpose, is to obscure the presence of God and the holy things that are in that room from everyone outside of it and to keep everyone away from it. Partially because if you just waltz into God's presence in an unholy state, you would die. But this whole thing that Jesus did is all about this part of the temple. And that's a, it's a really bad model. I don't know why I used that one. But it's, that would have been like 32 feet high and 32 feet wide about. So like three basketball hoops stacked on top of each other and width-wise. And they say that the curtain would have been about a hand's breadth thick. So like as wide as my hand thick or as wide as your hand. It doesn't have to be exact. So when Jesus gave up his spirit on the cross, this curtain ripped from top to bottom. And this is a super, super big deal. Like, this is one of the most climactic moments in the story of the Bible. I think, like, it's one of my favorite. It's very, you can, like, get into all the nerdy stuff about it, which we won't go completely into it tonight. But Jesus did something that tore the veil, tore the curtain from the most holy place to give us access to the Holy Spirit. 
This is a big deal. So Jesus, through his death, provided access for us to God personally. If you were a Jew in Israel during the time of the temple, you couldn't just go right to God. You had to have priests go. They had to sacrifice for forgiveness of your sins. There had to be someone intermediate between you and God. And then the high priest is the only one who go into the most holy place behind the veil, and he could only do that once per year. So what Jesus did is something new and significant, and this is a message from the Lord that is thousands of years in the making because he gave them instructions for this temple thousands of years before Jesus came and died on the cross so that he could paint a picture for you. And we're going to talk about what that is tonight. So truth for tonight, Jesus died so that you could know the presence of God, so that you could know God, that he could dwell within you. And there are some things I want to infer from this tonight, and three main points I want you to walk away with, okay? So point number one is God loves you. You need to walk away with that tonight. Stop and think about how amazing that is, that the God of the universe loves you. You didn't do anything to earn it. You can't do anything to lose it. He loves you. So I want to say tonight, for those who need to hear it, stop worrying about how well you're doing. Stop worrying about if you read enough chapters of the Bible in a sitting. Stop worrying about if you covered every possible topic you could in prayer, otherwise you didn't do it right. Stop worrying about whether or not you're doing enough. You can't do anything to earn his love. And I was reflecting on this with my daughter the other day when Jenny was helping me as I was applying this to my own heart and life. Micah does not have to earn my love. She can be a complete failure in life, and she's going to be the apple of my eye forever. She could, like, I don't know, what could she derp that would just be, like, the worst thing in the world? I would love her so much, no matter what. And that's how God feels about you. That's the thing is, it's so crazy that Jesus died on the cross because not only that, he knew that we still had to make a choice. We have to receive that love. So we can love God back, but not everyone will. And he knows that not everyone will, yet he still went to the cross. And you guys have heard this before, but God wants to tell you again. All right, so point number two tonight. God loves you. Okay, I have to give this a second spot in the message because so often it becomes just information. But I want so much more for you guys than to just be well informed about God's love. You may have been in church for years, and you keep hearing, God loves you. That's great, but this needs to interact with every part of your life. I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to go home and just be well-informed. I want your thoughts and your feelings and your desires to flow from this truth deep in your heart. I want it to touch every area of your life. I want you to feel it. When we sing those songs during worship, like, that's got to be real. It's got to be deep. I want your seeking God to look something like crying out to God, God, I need you so much. I want to know your love. Help me to love myself the way you love me. Help me to love other people around me the way you love them. Let my anxiety be drowned in your love. Let my confidence come come from knowing that you are for me. I'm not chasing after anything but you, God. You're my passion, my treasure, my delight. And the thing is, you guys don't have to muster up those feelings. That's not something you have to, like, do for God to receive his love. If you guys could only see how much God really loves you, if you could really let it touch the deep places of your heart, the parts of your life you've never let it touch before, you wouldn't have to muster up those feelings. You would stop struggling with that secret sin. You wouldn't worry about tomorrow. You would be for God every single time, all in. He would satisfy you. Okay, so last point, and then we can start to wrap up, because we're going to have a time in the Lord's presence tonight, so I want to give time for us to really seek the Lord and hear what, he, what else he wants to say to us. So third point, God loves you. I know this is a little bit funny, but this one actually has five subpoints that we can learn about God's love. You can go ahead and put those up on screen. Yes, I wonder what God wants to speak to us tonight. I know this is a little bit funny, and it's a little bit different, 
But I really, really want you guys to realize how important this is. So It's so easy to come into church, hear a message about God's love, and then just move on. Don't do that tonight. I mean, this, this obscure fact about the temple, among other things, is a thousand-year picture God is painting to write to you, and he does it all over the Bible, that he loves you. He loves you. I'm not trying to trivialize other aspects of knowing God, and there's more to know about God. But we can get so caught up in rule following and rule making and doing for God that we forget to just love him and just receive his love. If we do that, then the right kind of righteousness and rule following, if you want to put it that way, will come naturally, and it won't be a burden, and we'll be close to God. If you're going through a time in your life and you lack peace, or you're restless about something, or you're experiencing self-hate or depression, maybe you feel like a failure or unworthy, maybe you feel like God's holding out on you and you wish you could experience more of the world, what the world has to offer, whether it's that or something else, you need to let this truth Touch that area of your life tonight. God loves you. He loves you. So is there more to life? Is there more to getting up, going to school, and coming home on repeat? Is there more than spending life collecting a bunch of stuff? Is there more than having relationships end when people die? Yes. You can know the God of the universe who though he created everything, knows every single hair of your head and knows you intimately, every desire of your heart. And if you somehow let that truth sink in deeper tonight, that God loves you, you can experience it in a deeper way. It's not merely about getting to heaven, because heaven is all about knowing God and being in his presence and enjoying him and all the goodness and good things that flow out of who he is. So really, heaven starts now. You might call it practice for heaven because it's not complete. It's not all the way here yet. But it does start now. Relationship with God, resting in his love, dwelling in his presence, rising above the mundane, walking by his spirit. It starts now. If anyone in here has been a Christian for a long time and you're still doubtful, like, yeah, Jake, I've heard this. I've been hearing this my whole life. Let's just get on with it, do the altar time so I can go home, hang out with my friends. Guys, I've been a Christian for 22 years, and I still need this almost every day. I've had time after time and milestone of God in my life showing me how deep his love is, taking me deeper into it. And there have been times, and there was even a time last week when I was preparing for this message where God's love was so fresh and so deep that it was like I was meeting God all over again for the first time. Don't stop seeking him. There is more. If I could have you guys bow your heads and close your eyes and pay close attention to my voice, this is not just another altar time. God has more for you. And I just want us to simply respond whether you were a believer when you came in this room tonight or whether you're not, if you want to love God back and you want to receive his love in a deeper way, I want, to raise your hand, want you to raise your hand up all over this room. If you want to receive his love. Thank you. You guys can put your hands down. If you raised your hand and you've never put your faith in Christ before, Jesus simply asks that you repent and trust in him, meaning turn away from sin, turn away from not loving him back, and trust him to save you. And if you're serious about that, just speak to God about your desire to do that, and he'll come dwell within you and save you. He'll forgive your sins and help you to live a new life. And what you say to God might sound something like this, God, I want more of you. I want to love you back. Please forgive me and help me not to sin anymore. Come into my heart. If you're saying something like that, the words don't really matter. It's the heart behind it. If you're saying something to God like that, 
it's really important during our altar time that you find an adult leader to tell about that decision that you're making because they want to help you in your journey of faith. They want to help you go deeper like they've gone deeper. You guys can look up here. We're going to have some music going for a while tonight. And I want us to respond in one of three ways. Um, if God puts something else on your heart that you feel you really need to do, you can do that. Um, but the first one is just find a place in this room and reflect on the question and ask God, where is it in my life that God's love is not touching? Maybe it's something you've been feeling restless about. Maybe you haven't even identified it, but you're just anxious. Maybe there's a pattern of behavior you need to let go of. When you do that, just start by asking God for help and then just, just ask, what part of my life does the love of God need to interact with? Where are the deep places it needs to become more than just information? Second way you might want to respond is by just getting on your knees and asking God for more. Asking him to reveal, like he has for me so many times, and maybe, maybe you've done it more than I have, but there's still more. Getting on your knees and being desperate for God to show you more of his love to take you deeper. And just do what you need to do to hear from God. Finally, the third way you might want to respond tonight, if you're like me and it's really easy for you to get distracted by everything you're doing, or if you get caught up in feeling like you're not doing enough, I want you to do this. When we turn the music up in a moment, just worship God. Just worship him. And when you're ready, say something to him, vocalize to him, God, I receive your love. God, I want to rest in you. 